Hello and welcome to Bharat Shakti Dot In. I'm Brigadier Chatterjee, editor of Bharat Shakti Dot In. Today, our episode is part of the industry series that we are running in the run-up to our annual marquee event, the Foreign Defence Attaches Con- Conclave. This conclave has also been upgraded this year to be called the Indian Defence Conclave, and you will see a bigger show this year. I have with me today the MD and the Chief Technical Officer of Elena Geosystems, Lieutenant Colonel B. S. Vellan. Uh, welcome to the episode, uh, Colonel Vellan. And uh, I'll Thank start you, by just okay. Let me start by just asking you the first question. Tell us about the Navic system, which is the system that you are basically working on. And uh, that, uh, and I believe uh, you, you also claim that it's more uh, accurate than the GPS system. So can you just tell us about this? Sir. Yes, sir. So India has launched uh, to achieve Atmanar Bharta in uh, global navigation satellite system. Generally, what we know is GPS. Uh, India has launched a Navic system. Our company gives you solutions which are uh, which use Navic satellites, the Indian satellites, and uh, make you people use the Indian satellite system. And uh, we have the entire range of products, right from the antenna to the processor to the devices to the systems. And com- combining all this, we can give any solution to the public to make use of our Indian satellite systems. So this is our company, and. Uh, so far, we have been uh, providing our devices to the defense forces through Bharat Electronics and to Goa Shipyard also, we recently provided some uh, devices. We have been giving to the armed forces directly uh, for their vehicle tracking systems. And uh, this is in short about our company and the products that we give, sir. What I would like to add is that we have end-to-end presence in this domain and as of today, we are the only company which has got this capability today. End to end, when I say all components that go into a navigation thing, which is make use of the Indian constellation, at the same time, the dif- there are different types of things. That's a range and the depth of these products are uh, adequate with this. So combining this either individually or a combination of these devices, we can give a solution what uh, our client requires. Right. Uh... Colonel Willen, if I can get on to the next question, uh, sure. how does NAVIC system really score over GP, GPS system, what I was talking about when we started this uh, discussion between you and me? And uh, sure. uh, NAVIC, is it more accurate and is it more reliable? So very much, sir. GPS is best suited for their region in which it was built, sir. For example, from 25 degree north latitude to 65 degree north latitude, which we call it as a temperate region. Unfortunately, this GPS constellation is not accurate or technologically suitable for equatorial region, the region in which India and other uh, developing countries are there, sir, as of now. And uh, NAVIC, which is functional from June 2019, with around 12 satellites in place, is the best system, best navigation system today in the world. It gives you four meter accuracy compared to the GPS L1 signal, which is somewhere around uh, 300 meters. It gives you 4 meter accuracy. It is accurate. At the same time, it is assured by the government to all people in this region, so assured by the Indian government to all people here. When I say assurance means in terms of GPS, the L1 signal, the, they can uh, reduce the signal capability, they increase uh, the inaccuracies, are denied fully to people in some part of the world. In terms of our system, Indian government has taken a very conscious call to make it available for everyone. In GPS, there are two signals. One is L1 and L2. L1 is not accurate. L2 is very accurate. It is used by the armed forces. Whereas in India, we have L5 and S-band, similar to two systems we have. Both of them are highly accurate and both of them are assured to the public by the Indian government. So we have accuracy. We have assurance by the government. And our satellites are 24 by 7 available five to seven satellites are available to you continuously. This is not possible in GPS constellation where 
The satellites are at 20,500 km height, average height. They go around the world twice within a 24-hour cycle. So they keep moving constant, uh, continuously. Whereas our satellites are at 36,000 km high and they are just overlooking you continuously. So we have a continuous coverage for 24 uh, by 7 and we have good assurance, good accuracy. That's the best thing that you can ask for in case of any uh, navigation system, sir. So that's how Navic scores over everyone else. Uh, right. My next question, uh, Colonel. Is you were talking about the government uh, and Atma Nirvarta and how uh, Navic increases your Atma Nirvarta quotient. Uh, well, are there any government regulations really in place to support or speed up this kind of a switchover from a trusted system of old GPS to Navic? Sure. So basically, when we use this uh, system of all monitoring systems that are available for monitoring your work. No? We can use video cameras, we can put supervisors everywhere and monitor the work. Of all this, this technology, which is satellite-based monitoring, is the cheapest of all. So we, if we use this technology, we can reduce losses by 50%, increase your efficiency by 30%, in all resulting in doubling the output. So this has been understood by the government. Indian government understood it way back in 2008, and that's why they started putting up a dedicated system for us. The developed countries had used this GPS for it to enhance their development pace. Similarly, the same system can be used for enhancing our development pace also. So realizing this potential, today government has made many regulations and brought in many advisories. There are some proper acts, rules are there to support using the systems in India. And this has been extended to all countries around the world which are there in the Ecuador region also, de facto. By default, it has been extended, sir. For example, we have a rule which says that all yellow board vehicles in India, as public carriers, should be fitted with the vehicle tracking system. We should use NAVIC. Defense forces have been given clear orders from 2019 to use to shift over to NAVIC because then only we can be independent of any other system. We should not be dependent on any other country for our navigation purposes. Similarly, IMO, the International Maritime Organization, has made India responsible for maritime security in the Indian region, sir. So Indian government is bringing in rules, regulations to enhance the availability of NAVIC, use of NAVIC for the ships also. Similarly, in every domain, they're bringing in, sir. For aviation, there is already a rule which is existing that all the aircrafts which are registered in India should shift over to NAVIC. It's for their own benefit only. See, government rule only and will, it will get created only when there's a logic. And government is pushing people for their own benefit, sir. Corporates, when they use it, as I explained earlier, the output will double. So these are certain measures that are there for land-based uh, vehicles, for aviation sector, for shipping. And for the defense forces, already uh, government orders exist. Right. You are working with uh, you know, what is called cutting-edge technology. Uh, is your technology in-house? How are you keeping it updated? You see, it's a very competitive world. So you've got to perhaps keep updating your technology uh, as fast as you can. So what are you doing about uh, keeping yourself technologically ahead of the whole crowd? So our company got created only for this domain, sir. That's a core point, which means, first, this is a sophisticated technology, and over a period of, see, we started our company in 2012, for a period of last about uh, eight, nine years, nine, ninth year is going to be completed. In this time frame, we have created core technology which is required being focused only on this domain. So we are not an IT company, we are not an electronic company. We don't give any other service except for Navic thing. It is like democracy in India. It is like democracy is for the people, by the people, of the people. We are for Navic, off Navic, and by Navic people. That's a core thing. Now, so this technology is created by us in-house. At the same time, we have to keep giving different solutions the way GPS is being used today by people. For that, we keep updating our solutions, we keep making new devices, new uh, requirements keep coming up from the, from the users, we continuously keep updating ourselves. One way is said to engage the, our universities and colleges to get onto this domain. We support students to undertake PhD in the subject. We need a lot of workforce to what they help us in making this uh, mission by Government of India, Atmanir uh, Bharat Bharat, in uh, GPS to be successful. Father, our small way in which we contribute is that 
we invite students to project work in our office. Many colleges have sent people around uh, more than 50 people have done project work with us. That is PG students and UG students both. Uh, one girl completed her uh, master's recently from Ramya Institute with our project. Then uh, there are the two more PhD students from uh, Jain University who are associated with us. Badwan University is well associated with us. Similarly, uh, all universities are associated with us. That's how we keep ourselves abreast with the, with the technology. And as far as competition is concerned, our competitors, like they are in one domain only, either in the antenna or the uh, devices or the process like that they are there. Because their orientation is either the core company is IT company or the electronics company or a communication company. We being everywhere, we, our competition, you know, we are ahead of competition by having a good internet system. We make use of the newest, latest techniques in artificial intelligence and IoT. These two things we make use of in our systems to give a best solution possible where the total cost of ownership is a least amount of thing, which is the main thing for the Indian public. Cost is one of the main major issues. So we stay abreast with the people by keeping ourselves associated with the research institutions, doing in-house research ourselves, and giving products which are directly required by the public. We don't want to make any academic level product or technology with us. We try to make a thing, a solution which can be easily adapted by them. For example, for Goa Shipyard, they asked for a solution. The user wanted it to be navi based navigation to be there. We don't want to change the entire navigation domain. We just adapted our receiver, a small boat, a small adapter into the existing system. That way it is faster to adapt and in cost wise also very less cost. So that is how we keep ourselves abreast with the technology. We keep continuously innovating and uh, we are in association with the latest uh, technologies through the universities also. So this is in a nutshell how technology is developing us, how we are keeping ourselves abreast also. Right. Uh, thank you, Colonel Villan. I think we'll finish on that, that note. You've given us an absolutely comprehensive and concise idea about your product and the way it can really make a difference to the industry as also organizations like the Army and the Navy, the services, I would say, together. Thank you so much for sparing your time. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, thanks, viewers. Thanks for joining us. And do log in now and then you will find such interesting discussions on Bharat Shakti.in.